Okay, Angus, I owe you an apology with some explanation. Um, and here we are. Um, I went to do an oil change on your bike as you had put it on the list of things to do. You mentioned on the list that there is an oil filter in your pannier box. And I went and reached for that and went and performed your oil change the way, um, the way that anyone normally would. Uh, but I made uh, a pretty big mistake here. I've, I've corrected it, but I, I've made a big mistake here and I just need to explain what the mistake is so that you can learn from this and also you can um, know where I have made my error. Um, so in the list, it said oil filter provided and I went to reach for it and when doing so, found two bottles of royal purple oil in your penny box and did the oil change. I did not even look I grabbed this bottle here and I said, oh, great. Okay, he's got two bottles. I'll just use them and then top up with my oil for what little you may need with two liters. So I went ahead and filled it up and uh, even filled up the oil filter too. And uh, one bottle was had a little bit in it and was already pre-opened and the other one was completely sealed. I can't remember which one it was, but that's part of my mistake. Um, it wasn't until after that I realized what I had done. Let me just move these filters out of the way for a second. What I had done, and here it is. You will look at the bottle on the left, and you will see that it says Royal Purple Full Synthetic Oil Performance Oil. Uh, that it's for, uh, sorry, High Performance Motor Oil for Motorcycles and ATVs Max Cycle SAE 10W40. Then you look at the bottle on the right, and it just says High Performance Motor Oil 10W30. Now, the differences between these two oils isn't 10W40 or 10W30. They are relatively close, but obviously not the same. But the real detail that we are absolutely missing between these two oils is the bottle on the right is intended for cars, and the bottle on the left is intended for motorcycles. And I know that that's obvious because the one on the left says motorcycles, and the one on the right doesn't. But the real difference between these two is exactly this. On the back of this bottle, there is an additive that is meant for motorcycles only. And I'm just going to zoom in on where that is so that you can clearly see as in the fine print, I need glasses to read this. But you see right there in the center of it, it says right there, it says J-A-S-O T903 semicolon 2011. Now, this is the additive in motorcycle oil that allows motorcycles that have a wet clutch, which is what your bike has, to run with a motor oil in it. As you know, oil is a slipping agent, and if you add the wrong oil, which is this oil to your motorcycle, then you're gonna have problems with your clutch, which is what you mentioned. You said that sometimes when you pull it in, it still feels like it's not in all the way. In other words, the bike might creep ahead at traffic lights and whatnot. And if we turn this bottle around, you will simply see that in the um, fine print, it just simply says, hey, Royal Purple is a fantastic product. Go with us. You can't go wrong. Blah, 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 blah. And while that might be true with respect to automobiles, it is not true with motorcycles. And this, sir, is where I made the mistake with not noticing the differences between these two bottles of oil. They are extremely similar to each other. And if you just reached and grabbed for one and not the other, you could very easily make the same mistake that I made. I did not run the bike with this oil in it. I caught it before I ran the bike, but then realized that I had also wasted a perfectly good oil filter in the process. This is your old one here. So this one was gonna be changed out anyway. But also I took the new one that was in your pannier case, filled it with, I can't remember which oil, doesn't matter, and ruined it in the process. These two oils, this can be used with your bike, that cannot. And it's very, very easy to make this mistake as a consumer, not knowing exactly what to look for in the finer details. And I'll just make a sort of case in point here. This is the product that I prefer to use in all of my motorcycle servicing and in my personal motorcycles as well. And if you look at the two of them, they're remarkably the same, aren't they? Both of them are made by Lucas. Both of them have a red label. Both of them say high performance. Both of them say motorcycle. Both of them say 10W40. Both of them say synthetic. But one says Molly with Molly. And that right there 
is absolutely the kiss of absolute inconvenience and what the fuckery, pardon my language, with respect to how your clutch works. You'll also notice that this bottle right below it in white, it says meets or exceeds J-A-S-O-M-B. Remember I mentioned that in the royal purple? Well, that's the same on the other bottle of Lucas Oil. It says right there, meets or exceeds J-A-S-O. And that is the additive for motor oils to be used with motorcycles. And if you can't note the difference in this very, very subtle difference between the two oils, this will absolutely make for an absolutely miserable time riding your wet clutch motorcycle. Whereas this will absolutely make for a delightful, wonderful, high mileage time with your motorcycle. Wet clutch, dry clutch. Dry clutch, scooters, anything that doesn't have a clutch, this is the oil for you. Anything with a wet clutch, this is the oil for you. And you could just look, look how similar they are. Like they are the same. They even have that Jasso labeling on them that says, hey, I'm right for you. But if you don't know what Molly is, you could be in a whole world of hurt using this oil. Okay, that is the six and a half minute explanation I have on the mistake that I made. What I've done is I have not used this oil. You can see the cap is still on it. And instead, I used the synthetic 10W40 and filled your bike up with uh, two and a half liters of this. I put in one of my oil filters uh, from my personal stock. There's the empty box um, for you on your bike. And your bike is now lubricated the way it's supposed to be. Please, sir, rest assured, your bike is in good nick. Now, to the bike. Only a few things to mention. Um, also, to respect of your list, which I'll sort of loosely quote right here, the front tire has a leak. I actually filled the tire up to 60 PSI for the last few days, and it has not come down in pressure at all. I did soap up the valve and, um, you know, try to see if it'll blow bubbles, and I can't find anything. I will spin this tire when I get a chance just to see if there's a nail or a staple or something in there that, it's difficult to see, but it's nonetheless providing the leak. But right now, as it stands, 60 PSI before I left on the weekend, 60 PSI when I got back. So I'm not, I can't fix what's not broken. Uh, in addition to what's fixed not broken is this fork seal. You'll probably notice that this one here is clean. Well, at least on the rubber side, there's a little bit of schmutz on the top there. But uh, if you compare it to the other one, the other one's a little bit dusty. And that's the difference that I want to point out to you, that this one is clean, that one is dusty. This one is clean, and the other one is dusty. And the reason why that one's dusty and this one is clean is because I wiped this one clean. I cannot be 100% certain, but in my inspection of pulling up this dust cover and exposing what was underneath to see if there was in fact a leak, I couldn't find anything affirming. Um, typically, I wanna see a wet dripping fork seal underneath there with oil dripping down the side. These are obvious signs that the fork seal is leaking. but. When I pulled up this dust cover, and the reason I pulled it up is because there was, there was evidence of oil on the top here, not dripping, soaking wet, but enough to make me say, hey, what's going on here? So I pulled off the dust cover, found underneath what looked to be an excess of assembly grease. When they put forks together, they use grease so that the pieces slip together easily. There's no interference type thing. And maybe that's what that was. Um... And I wiped it all clean and all right down the bottom here so that you, sir, I have to rely on checking this fork leg. Anytime you go on a ride, anytime you can remember, just do one of these. You know, just do a quick wipe, have a look-see, and if there's a wet, also down here, right? If there's anything wet, any dirt type thing that's sticky, like tacky, then there's a potential that this is leaking. But I can't be 100% sure because it looks good, but it presents badly, if that makes sense. So please just keep an eye on that. Uh, of course, if you see drips on the driveway type thing, then, you know, call me. But I don't think you will. I don't think this is leaking. I'm just suspicious. All right, sir. Tire is in great condition. Uh, lots of tread. Uh, we already talked about the nail and its potential leak, but there's lots of life left in tire. All is good. The front brake pads, which are down inside that darkness there, are showing me about 75, 80% life left. They're wearing evenly and looking good. Got you a new oil filter. That's why it's so clean. We already talked about that a second ago. Um, you'll notice a couple of fairings pieces are missing. It's because I've got the seat off and I took the battery out, uh, which is sitting on my desk. And I should probably give you a little... Let me, get, let me get circle around back to that, okay? Um, 
Did a chain adjustment. Um, I don't know if your oiler is working the way that it should. It's kind of hard to tell if there's even one. Oh, I guess there is some in there. It's hard to tell. But um, the chain is a little bit dry, but you do have life left in it um, before you need to change it. You can see that the adjuster is showing that it's almost in the red. Not quite, but pretty close. I haven't finished up the tightening. That's why this has not been snugged up yet. I just wanted to run this video before my day ran out of time. Uh, the rear brake pad is showing probably about the same, maybe 75% life left, uh, and is wearing evenly and looking good. Same thing with the rear tire. Lots of life left there, plenty of tread, nothing to worry about. Your brake oil, uh, both brake oils, front and rear, are showing 98% purity, which is pretty darn good. I don't think you have to worry about that at all. And uh, the oil change, you can see the dirty oil, which actually is clean, we talked about that, um, just can't be used because there's car oil in this motorcycle oil, so I just dumped it, and now I've got you filled up with fresh Lucas oil in your bike. All right, now, under the seat to the battery and the air filter. Uh, sorry about this traffic jam mess. Uh, actually, I'm going to pause. This is a little embarrassing. Okay, um, <clears throat> your battery is kicking, sir. It is in really, really good condition. Came at... 12.73 volts at 264 cold crank amps. This battery is solid, and before I pulled it, I checked your charging system. Your bike makes great voltage. Lights, signals, horns, everything works the way it's supposed to, as you well know. For if it didn't, it probably would have made it onto the list, which is right here. Um, pulled the air filter. In order to get at it, you have to remove the battery. That's why it's sitting on the desk. And I apologize. I've only got one hand here. I'm going to move this aside like that. I apologize the lighting isn't as good as it could be. Uh, do I have a flashlight? Here it is. Uh, this is your air filter. And although the outside looks really clean and actually really good, uh, what we are looking for is inside. It's dark in there. So with a flashlight, you can clearly see that the inside of the filter is fairly soiled. So I'm going to say let's get ourselves another one, a new one, a clean one, a fresh one. Uh, bike shops, of course, as you well know, are closed Sunday, Mondays. So I can't get the filter for you today, but I will get it first thing in the morning, assuming one of the two dealerships in town have got the filter in stock. So we're just going to leave that out until it arrives, and it'll sit on the box next to your battery until we are good to go. So that's that's good. Okay, so front tire, did the clutch uh, adjustment, and we talked about um, the oil that was potentially wrong and potentially why it, it creeped. I did an adjustment. Uh, you can see here it says on the cable, uh, sorry, at the cable and the lever. And basically what I'm saying in that description is that the adjustment was probably more of a lever adjustment than it was a clutch cable adjustment. So you are going to feel that it's a little bit more firm in the pole. But specifically, I think the issue with your clutch doing what it was doing was that motor oil issue that we had. Uh, rear suspension, soft. 210 yeah okay let's talk about this do 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 i'm sorry this video is so crazy long oh now someone's calling me let me pause the video okay off the phone and back with you here we are uh rear shock uh is tucked in the adjuster is right down in here these square holes right here is the bottom of the shock and this is your um lowering linkage right here this clean part that i'm wiping off made by vortex a great company the issue that we may have with respect to um, to firming the rear shock is that this luring linkage kind of blocks us from getting a tool on it. This can absolutely be done. It's just a little bit more labor heavy in that we'll probably have to remove this uh, out of the way so we can get a wrench on there to turn it because it's, you can't see it in the video. But this, the two pieces are actually touching each other. So I, I can't. Anyway, so we're going to have to probably remove that. This is a great product, great people who make it, but um, but it's it's sort of blocking us from doing what we want to do with respect to the rear shock. So a little bit more labor required to get that done. Uh, back to your list. Okay, chain adjustment, already did that. Uh, front brakes, 99% on the front, 98% on the rear. Uh, oil change, we already talked about that. Uh, oh, sorry, brake... Fluid is 99% pure. Oil change. Necessary oil filter. Yeah, we already... Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Uh, Antifreeze is going to do that next. And fork seals, we talked about that too. And anything else I could find, which we are talking about right now. Okay, this video is far too long. I'm terribly sorry that it's taken so long for me to get through all this. Um, but I'm going to get in here, check the antifreeze, make sure that it's good. 
And after that, uh, we have to get the air filter from Honda, which is available tomorrow. And do, 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 I think that's everything. All right. And of course, wipe off my fingerprints. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs>